if we get nothing else, or should I say nothing else, out of this season, you got to admit, we've had a hell of a lineup already in our first generation, haven't we? My God. And thanks to all the incredible name suggestions, they're all just so memorable. Sam Weisent, Faye Snore, Elrong, uh, Legless, if I remember correctly, and then that guy, whose name I don't remember. But to be fair, from the look of him, neither does he. And now begins a new chapter away from King Tharthathafi, Tharthi, our new character's grandfather. And our chapter takes us all the way down to Wales, in the north of Wales here, in Merionith. Well, at least I think it's pronounced Merionith. If there are any Welsh people out there, they can, they can correct me. What do we have going for us? We are none other than Duke Elrong of Powys. I, I said this at the end of last episode, but I think a total flip from... Thartha Thartha. He couldn't be any more the polar opposite. He's a stubborn, arbitrary man. He believes that his decisions are the only decisions and are the correct decisions on his own whims, on his own arbitrary whims. But he's also a very lustful man, which I think complements the other two quite well. In terms of personality, that is. In terms of gameplay, it's a total nightmare. He is a web weaver trained from birth to be a spy of some description. Was that a choice I actively made or was that a choice his parents made. Color Brimboard. Oh, no way. Yeah, possibly. I don't don't specifically remember educating this, but anyway. Aspiring Blade Master, but sadly turned out to be not only a murderer, but an adulterer as well. Who did he kill is probably the better question. Okay, so he had uh, this guy executed. Wasn't anyone important, just a random Welsh dude. And uh, Cecil of Bristol, he also executed, but executed... Uh, I presume the standard way, as in execute him as a prisoner. This guy, though, was obviously an assassination plot. He's a hard character to play, because I have a feeling people aren't going to particularly like him too much. Minus 15 opinion for being a general murder, a minus 5 opinion for him being an adulterer, which is very annoying. Uh, in prison, already punished. That's right, he was in prison, wasn't he? By, um, I, th I think it was by his brother. I'm not entirely sure if that crime is still punishable again. I think he's fine for it, though. I don't think Tharthathathi Tharthi will act against him is the important part. Comely, Herculean, and intelligent, and more importantly, a high elf. He's a very high elf. A very, very high elf. He dwarfs pretty much most other characters. One-eyed and warlike courtier. I wish there was a way to find out how he lost an eye. Yeah, there you go. So he was imprisoned by Duke Sam uh, Wisent. But that was over a war. So I wonder when he was uh, when he was punished for that. Let's go through then and just have a quick look through his uh, through his earliest memories. He remembers his uncle dying by eating poisonous plants. He remembers Caled Brimbor dying under mysterious circumstances. That's interesting. Elrong was murdered. Erendor died of consumption. He had a very hard early life, didn't he? My God. This poor boy. He was so young when all of this happened. He developed romantic feelings for Esselsweth, a 57-year-old. Hang on, was she not the con artist? She was the one who scammed Tharthathathi Tharthi out of that money when she didn't go on adventure, as I recall. Uh, he remembers Eowind being killed in battle. All of his early knowledge is... Uh, all of his earliest memories are all about death, aren't they? Julia Melwood uh, finally acknowledged him as a full-grown man. Oh, interesting. So Julia Melwood was the one that educated him. Well, that's nice. It's grandmother. That gives us a nice tie back to Tharthathathi. Tharthi. He became the ruler, of course, of the Duchy of Powys, which, sadly, he's almost entirely lost at this point. He's only got Merioneth. So that, I think, becomes our short-term goal for this guy. Call back what is rightfully his. Take back that Duchy of Powers and maybe even spread out from there. He became enemies with... Ah, with, he became rivals with that Welsh guy that, of course, he had assassinated. Married Duchess Alara fell in love with his Alaran advisor. Interesting. If he'd have just married her, he would have never been considered an adulterer. That's annoying. But Darga died of old age. He murdered his rival. Received major reinforcements. My fir oh, Jesus. My first child, uh, Elorian, a beautiful boy, was born to my aunt, Alara. His aunt is his wife. Oh, I know why that is. Of course, because Tharthathathi Tharthi adopted her. They're not actually blood relatives, and they're the same age. It's not quite as weird as it would appear on the surface there. And then, of course, all the very, very recent stuff that we saw during yesterday's episode with Sam Wisent. With Sam Wisent. In fact, his, his children have only just been born. Really? How interesting. So, Elorian, his firstborn son, is three years old. Quick, elf-blooded, and Herculean. Did inherit that bloodline of Hell's Valoreth, but sadly didn't get much in the way of elf blood, which is a little bit disappointing. Arathorn, his second-born son, uh, he had two kids at the same time. One must have been from... Oh, my God, the daughter is so good. Born out of wedlock. Oh, no. Wild oats. She's Amazonian, intelligent, and pretty. What the hell? So she could uh, it's consecrate the bloodline, right? The decision I'm thinking of. She is absolutely nuts. Wow. 
Jesus, these kids are good. Uh, okay, we'll rename them. And speaking of renaming them, I've written down all your incredible names. Again, I like the idea of changing our naming scheme based on the character that we're playing. So Tharthi Tharthi was um, maybe not the brightest spark. It was maybe not the, the, the smartest man in the room. Named all of his children silly things. You have Threk, Galadriel, Eldum. This guy, lots of good suggestions for intrigue-based names that we'll apply in a second. Is there anything else about his character that we really need to uh, need to know right now? Not really. He's got one lovers again. That being his advisor, I think the sensible option is marry her. There you go. Finally, things are the way they were always supposed to be. The secret hovering over my marriage, I presume, can no longer hurt them or their mother now that we are lawfully wedded. Oh, it turns out this lady had two other kids, which were also his. They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> she is a high elf. She's Amazonian genius and pretty. Oh my god. See, I've never done a, a Crusader King story series, as far as I recall, trying to build the best traits into all the characters. You know, build the the, the, the ultra chads or whatever it is people do on YouTube. Uh, where they make, the, uh, of course, all the best traits in the same character. I've never tried to do that. It doesn't really appeal to me. I'd rather play the character. But this, though, is tremendous. They're actually so bloody good. We could marry them together, of course. Help emphasize those traits. Help reinforce them. My god, and do they count? Uh, they show up now as his official children. Oh, lord. Is she going to be really upset about that? She doesn't like him. Unfaithful, minus 16. Murderer, minus 15. Whiffy, as in he's a bit stinky, I presume. Let's have a look at some of his modifiers here. Um, he's examined old ruins, given plus 8% lifestyle experience. That's pretty good. Venomous encounter, bitten by a snake, given a moderate health penalty. And he also is a bit stinky for five years. Elven Duke superior to humans giving him prestige right now. Then that's quite fun. That would give him a lot of prestige over the course of his lifetime. And I think that's all we need to know about the guy. There were no rivals, as far as I recall. He didn't have any... Anything else really relevant? Anything else of interest? Well, there we are. Now, as a lustful man, he's probably quite interested in this lady. Given that she's got, you know, like, good stuff going for her. We could always attempt to seduce her. Lustful, stubborn, arbitrary. We could give it a go. It's 95% chance. Why not? Why not? Try and make things a little bit easier. He's a sensible man, okay? This guy is actually very intelligent. He's a very skilled uh, web weaver there. A very skilled entry character. I think he would understand that getting her on side, getting her a, a higher opinion of him would be very beneficial to the family. So that's going to be our first port of call here. Let's have a look at the council then. What have we got going on? Oh, uh, not enough and not a lot. Duchess Alara is set to... Okay, that's fine. Aloran Advisor, we've just married. Can we not shuffle her into a different position? We could. We could reassign her to be our marshal so that we get a new advisor from the Order. Our Spymaster does not like us. So I think that's probably what we want to put you on instead then. Yeah, let's shuffle you over there. Our new advisor will put wherever positions are viable for her. And I think we'll go from there. Pay homage. Travel to King Thartha Tharthi's court to much. I like that. You know, it, it really does help move us on to the next chapter, right? Promise favor. Give him a hook. Give him some gold. Give contract obligations. Ooh, interesting. I don't think we can afford to give him any gold right now. We've only got 69 gold. Very nice. Um, give contract obligations. Give him a hook. I, honestly, him having a hook on us isn't, I don't think, super relevant. I don't think it really matters too much. I don't think it's super important to uh, our, our realm. I don't think it's going to be dangerous to us or anything like that. So I'm all right with that. What is that? It's a uh, forest, I presume. It certainly looks like a forest, doesn't it? And that's a fair point. What's he got going on? on schemes? Nothing. Nothing at all. Decisions he can make might also be worth having a look at here. We've got our standard elven stuff. Consecrate bloodline. I'm sorry. I was thinking of strengthen bloodline. You do have to be dynasty head for that. You're all right. Ugh. Could be hard to set up, but it is definitely, definitely possible. That's not a problem at all. Other than that, everything's pretty standard. We're a good guy. Intrigue he's already gone into, and he's already gone into Seducer. So I I'm all right with that. You know, he is a seduction-based character. So let's throw... I think we'll just throw it into Skullduggery. Skullduggery can help with seducing, so I don't think that's, uh, that's too bizarre. What's he getting per month here? My god. 8% from the ruins, 20% from intelligent. The holy sites are giving another 20%. Is it capped? I don't think I've ever seen it go higher than that. Oh, well, that's fine. Well, let's head out then. A fresh start. We are on our way to Vestalan, the capital, of course, of our elven empire. Oh, God. Well, he's passed limited crown authority. Interesting. 
and he immediately reformed the religion. <laughs> but when it was free, and I was like, I don't know if I want to spend it on anything. This is interesting. Uh... Right, King Thartha Tharthi, a prominent figure among the sisters, has gathered every priestess in the land together to discuss their beliefs and establish an official doctrine for the faith. These catalysts have declared Ella and Weavers to be one true faith and a sanction in the marriage of close kin, claiming that bonds of family are sacred. That was already something. Pledge movement has decided not to institute a religious head, instead preferring to let each priestess determine what to do. So what has actually changed there? It's mentioned the tenet that we already have, right? We count as old and Aluren. Right, and what has he just flipped us over to exactly? Sorry, what's his? I, I'm not sure what he's changed. Ah, uh, I'm I'm actually not sure what he's changed. I don't think anything has changed. Look, Alaran Weavers, old and Alaran. What has he done? No one holds the position. No one holds the position. No, of course they don't. Crime doctrines have changed, perhaps. This is the new religion. Criminal accepted, criminal, criminal, close kin, virtuous. Criminal accepted, criminal, criminal, close kin. Okay. Uh, something lower down. Recruitment women allowed spiritual cremation. Women allowed spiritual cremation. I think he didn't change anything. I don't think he's changed anything. Am I... I, I don't, I'm not missing anything, right? He reformed it. But it's done nothing. All it's done is caused problems because now half the realm is going to be astray with absolutely no benefits. Tharthi, Tharthi, you blithering idiot. Ah. Oh. Well, I guess we'll convert. I, I genuinely could not see any difference. Please do comment if I messed that up and there was something there. Uh, Llewellyn, no, thank you. I don't know who this man is. Well, um, that's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Removes your attraction penalties in seduce schemes. Might not be bad given that it's apparently stinky for another five years. Can only go critically fail seduce schemes. That's good. Because when you critically fail, it goes on cooldown for like 10 years, right? Before you can attempt to seduce them again. Or it might be... Is that the one where they say no? Oh, wait, what happened? Pay homage costs... Oh, we're, we're sent home. Why have, I, why have we been sent home? Because we converted, perhaps? Uh, was attacked by Earl... Oh, because war was declared on our liege. I understand. For too long, I've suffered indignities at the hands of Tharthi. Tharthi, I will not stand idly by while our liege abuses his loyal vassals. Um, you are the traitor. Absolutely, you are. I don't think he needs any help with that, right? Was this war at? Oh, yeah, no, I think I think we're fine. Thank you. Focus on our own life, then. Ah. 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 What? My elven people have collectively reached a profound understanding. A ways that have served us raw memory are just not sufficient, but a perfected gift given to us by generations of refinement of our ancestors. We'll advance through adapting the ways of ignorant castle dwellers, but by manifesting our true ideals. So basically, we've become elven ascended again. And now we're shouting, Ooga Booga, my brothers, Ooga Booga. We've changed to our government type just flipped. Oh, well, that's good, because ascended tribal was better. I guess it maybe doesn't take effect immediately, and it's somewhat delayed. Weird. Oh, unless our capital was forced into somewhere. That's more likely. That our capital was forced to somewhere that is tribal. No, your, your castle holding. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I'm all right with that. That's 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 okay. I like that government side. That's not a problem. Hello, madam. Are you any good? You would make for a fantastic steward. Shame we can't move you over there. Um, I mean, I'll just reassign her, even though she's bad. And then we can swap some over and we can swap some around and, and just kind of juggle things. You can appoint a worthy successor to Sword Maiden of the Divine Spark. Oh, Manipulator. What does that do for us? Sorry, am I missing something? Uh, it doesn't... I don't know what Manipulator does, and it won't let me find out. Well, that's okay. That's not a problem. Um, we get Intrigue Scheme Power Plus 10 from Manipulator. I don't know why it's not showing up over the over the hover icon there, but that's fine. Uh, Muriel, there you are. I'm only allowed women to... I mean, that would make sense, given that it's called the, the, the Sword Maiden of the Divine Spark. Okay, fair enough. That's cool that he's made an accolade. Oh, the other thing I want to check and the other thing I want to talk about is artifacts. Right, so he hasn't got any artifacts. Now, a lot of people are concerned that maybe because I didn't transfer the stuff over, Tharthi Tharthi could die, it could be lost, it could be destroyed, etc., etc. I would say don't worry about it. If, if it, you know, obviously the main story is restoring the portal and things like that. If these are lost or destroyed or anything to that effect, don't panic. I will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll add them back in. We'll, we'll have them 
uh, pier on the beach of some faraway land and we can try and reclaim it that way. As long as they're in the game, I think that's fine. Um, alternatively, we could always try and steal them. 85% chance of stealing it straight from Tharpa Tharpy's hands. <sighs> I, I, I mean, you don't like him. No, he doesn't like you at all. I wish we had that opinion mod. Maybe I'll throw one in quickly so we can at least see how to play this guy. Ah, well, uh, that certainly cleared that up, hasn't it? Uh, your opinion of King Tharpa Tharpy plus 100. We would never steal from Tharpa Tharpy is what you're saying. <laughs> Jesus. Why is it so massive? So, uh, baseline here, things that will never change. Heart of the Family plus 15, Impress Court plus 5, Long Rain plus 8, obviously that'll only increase. Domestic Affairs plus 6 unless he moves someone over. Confederate Partition, plus five. Same Dynasty, plus five. Covenant of Faith, Communal Identity, Legendary Figure. His personal Diplomacy is giving plus one. Glory Hand approves of Offensive Victory. So there are all the temporary modifiers down below. Even without that, the guy's looking at like a plus 40 flat opinion. Wow, okay. Good for him. I, I think the chance of him getting any major rebellions or anything like that is exceptionally slim. I've been made aware that Duchess Solara is close to her sister, Duchess Galadriel. That's his aunt... My aunt, that's right, aunt and sister-in-law. How concerning. Um, I would get Galadriel whatever she asked for. Would he do that? He's stubborn. So I feel like, yeah, when he commits to a plan, he commits all in, all the time. So yes, let's do it. She's getting a favor hook on us. That's okay. He, he would he would be able to, to do something with that. Next time we meet, Alara offers me a wider smile than usual. My sister Galadriel told me of how you helped her. I wanted to offer my thanks. Anything for a sister of Alara's. And anything for an art of mine. <laughs> ah, and there's our new advisor, Evrandriel. Hello there. Um, you are a much better marshal, which we love to see. Um, I would like to throw you there. She gets fired, though. E okay. Um, can't do anything with diplomats, which is quite annoying. Put him there. Get a new diplomat entirely. Which one of those two are better? Um, I think we swap... I think we swap those two around. Is that the right move, though? No, absolutely not. Okay, I'll leave it how it is. I'll leave it how it is. That's all right. What do we think of Sam Wisent, though? Minus 83, because he has the Lordship of Pendlin and the Great Temple of Furlix. Wow, threatened by aggression. Minus 37 to Club War, minus 24. This is our guy, right? This is the one that we've got to try and take out. This is the guy that we've got to deal with. The problem is he outnumbers our troops 10 to 1. Our army is better composition, but obviously that's because it's because we're a single county. Now, we could look to going elsewhere. We could grab the Isle of Man, for example. That might not be too bad. 3,000 troops, how would we do that? Uh, difficultly. What about some alliances? It would be quite easy to twist the arm of some of these people, I think. Um, 800 troops there. That's not... Oh, it's Threk. Threk the second. This is cool because it's also our... It's not our rival, but we really do not like him. It, it's his son. So if we could, if we could get him on side, we got eighty-one percent chance. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh, sorry, sorry, scheme success chance. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. I think that's probably our best move. Alternatively, just trying to go anywhere else to start building up a power base. We might be able to do something over in Northern Ireland there in Ulster. We could probably hit hard. I think the best early play for us to try and get control of a bad situation: get some Fey archers, build them up. Uh, preferably as high as possible. Obviously, we'll need a bit of prestige first. Station them in the capital, and we just build up as much as possible. We can even build a new uh, holding, because I think we can station them in, in it. We could, we could get another man at arms and station it in that adjacent holding, too. That might give us a springboard, and obviously, the way that we'll build up cash and prestige, more importantly, is going out raiding. The problem is, what the hell am I going to raid with 160 troops? Not a lot. <laughs> like, not a lot at all. A reading in the Barony of Harlech. Uh, something pious, like, seek it non. Yes, absolutely. She would love to hear religion. She's trusting, content, and temperate. Um, spiritual medicine gives us a chance to learn. She could be interested in that. Honestly, let's go with the pious one. Uh, she liked it. That was a good choice. Well done. Big brain time. Ooh, hello. A wave of excitement is swept over your court. A tournament champion is rumored to be staying in town. It's other than Arwenia, renowned strategist of rising star of the board game contest. She's a real crowd favorite. Bloodline of House Aurelian. Oh, look at her. Intrigue plus two, dread game plus twenty percent, natural dread plus ten, number of domain limit plus one, number of knights plus two, attraction opinion plus five, control growth. You know what I'm about to ask? Do you think those traits conflict? 
I don't know why they would, because, I mean, you could have a bloodline of two separate houses. If we could get her, marry her into the dynasty, shit, marry her, full stop, just, just marry her, and then those kids that inherit that bloodline, we mix with the kids who have the other bloodline too. It's a shame all the really good kids don't have bloodline of Hell's Valorith. Well, that's something. Herculean, comely, intelligent. We marry this kid, who is also an elf, to any kids that she has. If it works, it would be awesome. Yes, I have to seek her out. This event is from Elven Destiny. That's cool. I like that. I like that, that it, it informs you where it's from. There she is. You find Arwina down Arwinia down in the local tavern, surrounded by a crowd of adoring onlookers. After some brief introductions, you would you would ask if she would share a drink with you. A few months later, you your dance business, you express your interest in her joining your court. You're in luck, she says. My last lord could no longer afford my sponsorship and release me from the service. Be able to honor, uh, be honorable to serve a Nova noble lord by yourself. But I warn you, I'm no common courtier, and my services do not come cheap. Um, I think we'll just go for. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you're worth it. Put the realm in debt for this lady that then we marry. This is big brain, son. We lose 300 legitimacy. I'm sure this guy has no legitimacy anyway because he's been absolutely smashed war after war after war. Yeah. As expected legitimacy, though, it's apparently zero, so I'm not too concerned about that. That is the potential for something massive, right? I'm not just saying that because she's enormously tall. Uh, almost as tall as he is. This could be cool if we manage to mix a bunch of bloodlines together, maybe try and collect them all. Now, there is kind of an argument to be made, why the hell do we care about our kids if we're swapping characters every 70 years or so and jumping around? You don't, there's less incentive to do better by your direct descendants. We'll probably be coming back. I think choosing a direct descendant of characters we've played before is going to be super interesting. And that sets up a really interesting future character that with, with all those bloodlines, right? So certainly we'll, we'll probably jump back to one of them. So we want to give ourselves more options for that in the future, eh? Oh, God. Let's fill up this council then. Sorry. We need to do something with this, don't we? Um, so, search for a court tutor and a caravan master and a physician. That One of them might have something good for us. Hello. Um, well, women can't serve in those council positions, unfortunately. So that's not relevant. You're terrible. You are better. Yes. Saleon. I'm sorry. I have to throw this realm in debt a bit more. It's a necessary evil. And, and are you any good? No, you're, you're pretty bad too. On the plus side... That should let us do something here. If I reassign you, I can't make him our steward. Why? Oh, okay. We'll look into it. Oh, it's because he automatically joins and takes the role of caravan master. That's okay. It's been an honor to meet. Thank you for your hospitality, Drew Wrong. Until we meet again, the foreign envoy bows. I stand up, say farewell, but stumble out of my chair and clumsily fall to the ground. At least the envoy was polite about it. Oh, you really are an embarrassment. This is uh, this is the start of his character arc. He's clumsy. He's at the he's at the bottom of the barrel. You know, he's he's been dealt loss after loss after loss. He had a hard childhood. We're going to build him up, goddammit. This man's going to be a, a beautiful beast one day. Oh, dear. My beloved aunt. Uh, I, as my sensible aunt, Duchess Alara, smiles unwarily, I drop any pretest of restraint, tearing the shot off her, putting my hands around her waist, my mouth on her neck, my aching desire against her home. Okay. Um, the love... Uh, okay. The love a nephew feels for his aunt can't be wrong. <laughs> she will not be anything but my aunt. <laughs> Neither of those are good options, but obviously, yes. She's already his wife. Again, they're adopted. I'm sure weirder things happened in the Middle Ages. And probably still happen now. It's not the Middle Ages. I'm, you know what I mean. Okay, that's good. I'm alright with that. It's a good start. We played the character. We got a seduction. We've tied it up, you know, like a, uh, maybe a potential problem in the realm. Maybe now you seduce uh, this lady right here. Ah. I am flipping this guy over to Steward. Just so at least we can collect some taxes. Surely the troops are ready to go. No. <laughs> no, but not quite. We'll manage. We'll, we'll figure something out. In my pursuit of Duchess Elvinia's affection, it would be very helpful to know exactly what her tastes and preferences are. Um, my spies will uncover this in no time. Perhaps I was a little indelicate in approaching Elvinia. Now she wonders why I'm unreasonably interested in her valuables. No, that's not... No, he's not trying to steal anything from you. She does have a lot of valuables. Look at how she's dressed. All right, well, you know what? We've got to do something here. So we'll go out and we'll see what we can hit with 133 troops. Very careful raiding, I think, is on the cards here. Very, very careful raiding. We'll pull ourselves out of debt. Try and go back with a bit of prestige. King Tartu Tharthi is being attacked by leader Sigrik. I think he's probably fine. Just do whatever damage you can. Why are we not sieging? Am I... Am I going mad? Ah, oh, that's good news. The winners of plague my daughter from birth has finally disappeared. She has 
10 diplomacy at the age of three. She is the best diplomat in the realm. I don't know why we're not sieging. Am I going mad? We just lost almost all of our troops to attrition. Maybe it's because I'm trying to uh, trying to raid with 100 men. I can carry three loot now. Oh, hello. Uh, all the servants have been sent away and our bed has been decorated with roses. As Duchess Alwinia enters our chamber, she smiles attentively and joins without any hesitation. We were united in marriage and now we're united in heart. Oh, that's good. Listen, we're just going to have to try and scrounge up a bit more prestige first, I think. I imagine there is some lower end limit on what you're allowed to go raiding with. And I don't think 100 troops is... um. Yes, I know I'm in debt. Okay, we're working on it. Ah, oh, well, if nothing else, Duchess Alwinia is already pugging at. That's very nice. Damn, she's a good character. 45 learning is insane. Ugh, okay, let's put you on managed domain. Maybe help bring in a little more tax. No, what do, you, what do you mean that didn't work? If I go for chivalry, does that help our levy size? Wow, we really are fighting an uphill battle here, aren't we? My god. Ah, Elowin. Elowin is a high elf, but she did not get the bloodline. That's unfortunate. So then, my names. My names we should probably throw at the kids that are already in line to inherit. The ones who are already the firstborn. So what have you got? High elf, Amazonian, genius, pretty. You are actually insane. Um, I would love to rename you to something slightly better. Uh, the first name for my intrigue elf character. We are going to go for... <laughs> Robbie. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> As in, like, Robbie the house elf, because she's going to steal something. Maybe, like our guy, it's stealing uh, your heart. Your son and cousin is also growing strong. Oh, great news. He's actually the one that I want to marry off to the other one, so that's fantastic. Uh, we're going to rename you, because you're quite important, uh, to... Um, fantastic name, uh, Elf Capone. Uh, just an incredible name there. Thank you. Would you put him into stewardship? That would be that would be a great idea. Um, let's get out of here. Let's put you in. Oh, okay. Well, diplomacy. That's all right. I'm starting to see a theme with these names. Uh, we've got uh, John Fane Gacy. Very good. Very good uh, for you know, potentially murderous branch of the dynasty. I like that. This one's slightly less subtle. Uh, suggested Malakil, which is pretty good. Uh, specifically, they said Malakil the Accursed. So that would do. Much better name. I feel kind of bad for him, given these handsome, genius, robust elf. Called him Malakil the Accursed. <laughs> I need a few more names, actually. I should have written down a bunch more. We need, I, sorry, it's my bad, because I thought, oh, he's got three kids. I'll pick, you know, like like three or four or five good names here. And then he ended up having a whole bunch more. I'm looking around at the garrison sizes, and I'll be honest. The chance of us being able to raid anywhere is uh, tremendously low. 26 levies there. Hey, you know what else they've got? Nine loot. I suppose nine loot is better than no loot, isn't it? Is there something else I'm forgetting that prevents you from raiding? Because even nine gold would go a long way right now. Levies are 26. It's not determined by this hold, is it? That's 181. I don't remember what else it, uh, puts a restriction why we can't just take that nine gold. But that's okay. You know what? Oh, we got an army of 10 men. Beautiful. That is... An incredible benefit. Instead of just looking for that quick payday, we're, we're going to have to accept that this guy's going to have to play to his strength somewhat. And I think a little bit of fabrication of hooks and then what we demand payment for it. The old classic one-two punch. I mean, it, it's not a terrible way to go about it. How long until we can flip over, though? Uh, does it not say if you hover over that anymore? No? Um, what kind of change? 944, two years. I mean, to be fair, we could probably get a good handful of hooks. Having a hook on a person we hate is already just a good play to have. We might not even necessarily cash this one in. My agents have made contact with Galanoriel, a servant in my cousin Duke Sam Wisen's castle. Oh, um, well, I think we could just take the bomb option. You know, play the, play the character somewhat. Or we could start something here instead. You lose 15 stress because you're lossful. This not, guy's never going to have any problems with... With stress at all. Ooh. Duke Galador, you may have actually bailed me out here, pal. Let's go. ASAP over to that hunt. He's having it right there. Beautiful fella. Uh, and then, oh, I fired the caravan master because I was trying to earn a little bit of, oh, obviously a little bit more cash. We'll point her and sack her afterwards. It's fine. 20 gold. I can't afford it. Good lord, I can't afford it. But what I'm thinking is, if we can get enough prestige to get us out of this prestige hole, then we use that to build up some troops that we can go raiding. Everything's fine. Let's get going. Hello there. Horrible, horrible, disgusting man. You can tell they're related, though, to be fair. Soon. Our goal. 
I think we're going to go Slay Beast. We just need the prestige at this point, no matter what. Hello. Oh, Feasnor's here. Oh, we love Feasnor. He's such a character. He's such a recognizable character, too. Four months until it begins. Good God. Do you know what I could have done in four months? Oh, Arwenia, you have been so brave, so strong. Words cannot describe my love for you, and now we have the perfect little son. Did he get the bloodline? Valandor. He did. He's a genius. Oh. Oh, my God. This kid. This kid. Monthly lifestyle experience, an extra 5% on top of the 30% it gets by default. Oh, my God. Valandor. Okay, let's have a look at my uh, names here. Um, some others that I've written down. Elagast. That's actually quite good. Elagast for you, my son. Oh, my God. Consecrated blood. Thartha Tharthi consecrated the bloodline. Look at his horrible face. Oh, you legend. Paragon. He actually got Paragon. Oh, what a guy. We should all be grateful to him. Yes, we. he's doing so much. It's interesting how much religious-based stuff he started doing after I stopped playing him. How much he's going to commit to that. I still cannot get over how Threk looks. So, Tharthi Tharthi stole all the head from Threk. He looks like someone, doesn't he? He looks like a bloody... Uh, I want to say like a kid's cartoon character. He, like, a, like I'm saying a specific character from a show. You got a little bit Grandpa Simpson these days. But no, he, he looks like someone very particular. I just can't think who. So bizarre. Surprise, Threk's still alive. I uh, hello there. The simplest solution is often the best. Why worry with all this intrigue and manipulation when I simply coerce him into doing my bidding? This is one of those situations where I think playing the character is not good, but is certainly something I would never normally do. Uh, he is stubborn and arbitrary. He's already a criminal twice over. He's a murderer. He's an adulterer. I think the pub the court of public opinion has already made their mind upon him. And if he has to do some terrible things against his enemies to uh, make his plans come to fruition, I think it's fine. Again, he's also stubborn and arbitrary. So he would stick to his bloody plan that he's put into action here. We gain 20 dread, a weak hook on him. But all of my subjects lose five opinion. We've threatened Duke Sam Wisen, and I think that's a good play. He's already been uh, militaristically threatening, so now it's time to get him back in the way that we can, with our big brain. Let's put our Spy Master to good use as well, because I think this is absolutely going to be uh, a necessary way for us to start building up a bit of capital, but also maybe get a little prestige in the meantime too. Just getting all these hooks puts us in a safer position than we are right now. I just feel like we're very delicate, very vulnerable. King Tharthi Tharthi found tracks. Is Tharthi Tharthi here? Is he here? Guest list 11. Oh my god, Tharthi Tharthi's here. Oh, he's got the whole gang back together. It's Tharthi Tharthi, us, Feosnor, the other Threk, the less impressive Threk. This guy's looking quite chadly, isn't he? Wow, what did Consecrated Blood do again? Does that sell up plus 10? Fine. Uh, so be it. Duke's Galador's Huntsman said so they know the place of the Beast Cobra and nearby water holes and grazing the stag frequency. Bursi found some tracks. Galador takes aim. The stag cocking its head as though in anticipation. The arrow sails past it. And we failed. Did we actually get anything to show for that at all? Every participating guest gained 187 prestige. See, we're working on it. We gained the trait hunter too, which is nice. Uh, we also apparently got some stag antlers, even though we didn't kill anything. How does that work? I'm not entirely sure. Was it core artifact too? Who had that? Who gained that? I thought we was to gain that. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter too much. She's Perganan again. Great news. Keep going. Before I go to bed, I've had an urge to gaze at the night skies. I sat there looking up at the stars of the Obsidian Tapestry. I can make out a few of the constellations. How lovely they are. Um, I want to stay up all night watching these stars. It gets you learning penalty plus one. Monthly lifestyle experience plus ten. Oh, it's learning lifestyle experience. But it's okay. That's not bad. Finally, we have a valid candidate for a diplomat. Foreign Affairs gives us 0 0.9 prestige per month. That's good. We're almost out of the prestige debt. And then as soon as that's done, Arathorn. Oh, my God. <laughs> what the fuck? Hello. Genius, handsome, hail, consecrated blood, fecund, high elf, spark gifted. This might be the best kid we've had so far. Uh, put a pen in that for now. He didn't inherit the... Oh, sorry. Wrong wife. Oh, it's easy to get them all confused. Arathorn. Yes, may you grow strong and wise, my son. Absolutely fine. What we want to do then is marry that uh, one kid with the bloodline to the other kid with the bloodline. So you have it. Consecr so what, what have you got there? Quick Herculean. You've only got elf blood, though, which I'm not a big fan of. Elf Capone marries the other... Who was the other kid with the bloodline? Um, was it... It was that one. No one. What do you mean? 
Oh, because it was uh, it was male. I guess that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. Um. Yes. How annoying. Yeah. Okay, that's a bit of a penny ass. What about this kid? Can we get this kid to marry? Surely we have another one with the bloodline of the other one. Um, bloodline of House Valorith, correct? Neither. Ah. Oh, okay. Keep going. Keep trying. You'll be fine. And especially now they're lovers, that uh, that gives a boosted chance for kids, right? We are trying to fabricate some more hooks here. Oh, that one's might as well just bin that immediately then. Just going against rulers who have a bit of cash in their pocket, you know, cash that could be ours. We can't fabricate anything on him because Legless is incapable. Oh, the irony. Um, Cornwall. <laughs> oh, Duchess Celestia. Oh, I'm so sorry for what they've done to you. Wow. You got all of that. Oh, my God. Double Duke. Why? I was very careful not to land. Oh, his brother. It's his brother. Right. Okay, fair enough. Um, well... Let's go ahead, my sweet brother, and get a hook on you. It was that other brother that died is what I was trying to say there. And he obviously inherited his title. And it was the abduct scheme. I mean, it, it's certainly a way to go about things, isn't it? Murder scheme power is up. I'm really so bothered about that one. Let's go for kidnapper. Resilient bloodline unlocked. Really? Oh, my God. Chance of inheriting bad congenital traits down by 30%. Chance of new bad congenital traits down by 30%. Wow, um, he's going hard on that. Thartha Tharthi is doing everything that possibly I would have. Boy, I hope we get to choose Architect his ancestor and it's not up to the AI to do it because they have a habit of picking crap ones. Daughter, show me the bloodline. Show me. Yes! Whoa, she's also genius, commonly Amazonian, consecrated blood and the bloodline too. He's founded a holy order. Another one, the High Purifiers. Oh, but of course, the other one would have been disbanded because that was, uh, because that was the old one, right? Does it still count? Old and Eloran? I presume we can't hire them, even though the religion is identical. That would make no sense at all. Very bizarre. I'm surprised they're still around. Uh, a, a dark knight can make the shadows in my castle's hallways come alive. The perceived risk for an unsanctioned visitor rise even higher for every unguarded corner spotted. Um, I can't hire anything for anyone, my friend. You haven't got any money left. We spent it all on a wife. Beautiful. Flipped over to stewardship, and it was very, very fast to get us to where we needed to be because he still gets plenty of experience. But obviously intelligent. The holy site's called Chooser there. Golden obligations means that we can get out of this debt hole that we find ourselves in. Thank you. 75 there, 10 from there, and we'll keep getting these hooks and just keep... I know I was going to keep the hook on him. It's not a big deal. We could probably just... Probably just grab another. Or we just abduct him, literally, and then <laughs> keep him in prison. That'd be interesting. Steel artifact. What's he got? Thoth of these battle acts of virtue. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I'd love to, but we need a bit more cash for the time being. Interesting. He wants to train Meliantha for his grandson. Absolutely not. What, your, your, your human grandson for... The future of elven kind. No, decline. I don't care if we earn prestige. It's not worth that. How dare you? Another daughter. Arena Falconhander. Amazonian genius, pretty elf, and consecrated. These bloodlines are nuts. Oh, the fabricate hook scheme failed. Well, on the plus side, we're out of debt now. Was it worth paying that 100 gold and putting us in debt for years on end just to... Uh, how old is he now? 30. Bloody how we've blown through those first few years. But look. I think it was necessary. I really do think it was necessary. For any face casualties, minus 10% might help with raiding. So I think we'll take that one. Even though we just, you know, again, randomly, randomly gain that from that. I think we'll flip back over to Intrigue, though, when we're done with... When we're done with... with or, or as soon as it comes off of cooldown. Oh, no. Never have I thought that a man could have too much passion, yet it seems life has proven me wrong. Some days I feel as if my spare time is nothing but attending an exclusive feast with Valoria, going on bold adventures with Alwenia, and fantasizing about the future with Alara. How long can I go on like this? These women will be the end of me. Romance is about quantity. It's not about quantity, but quality. Use your romantic skills to keep your lover satisfied without overworking yourself. Excellent. Uh, oh dear. Following the death sentence... Oh, no. Following the death sentence of a lowly thief, I asked my son, John Fane Gacy, what he thought. Expressed doubts to whether any god could want the realm to be ruled by such harsh law. Um, he is cynical. I can flip him from cynical to just or cynical to temperate. Do not expect to see the divine spark justice, my son. Great. Brilliant. Not the right name to be teaching that lesson, eh? 
Oh, now that's beautiful. My lover, have you heard what they call you? They call you Duke Elrond the Beguiling. That's good. Uh, to, uh, to be beguiling is fantastic. See, everybody's none the wiser. Maybe those rumors about being a murderer, an adulterer, maybe they all start fading away. Maybe people start forgetting it and focusing on the here and now. Because who cares if he once murdered people if he's enthusiastic and charismatic, huh? Uh, let's go for Covenant of Faith. Same faith opinion plus five. That'll show you beguiling. We can now pay homage. We actually have money. And more importantly, we have prestige. And we can also petition our liege, which I don't think is necessary. I don't think we need to do that. I think what is more important, though, is... Oh, almost. Sorry, just, uh, just a little bit longer. And then we can crank up our Fey Archers and then get the ball rolling. Beautiful. Oh, or we spend 150 on money. That's not necessary. That's not necessary. We need prestige more than we need money right now because with prestige, we can earn a lot more money. As I lean over the map of the council chamber, a sudden creak turns my head towards the door. My daughter, Elwyn, appears, running towards me, shrieking, Hugs! She leans in closer and closes my hips in a firm hug. I look at her, a hidden tear in my eye while my hand is stroking her hair. Oh. See, he's got a soft heart. He's got a soft heart. Much like his enemies that he uh, assumably stabbed. Right. These are all terrible. Meritocracy. Swear fealty. Can't because we're a duke. Because they swear fealty and then take his throne. We would never take the throne from Tharthu Tharthi. However, should Tharthu Tharthi die, who takes the realm? Sam Wisent. And if Sam Wisent takes the realm, we claim the throne. We put ourselves back in charge of Elfland. Oh my god. Sometimes it's just a thing of beauty, isn't it? Thank you all for joining me on this elven adventure today. Uh, apologies for overrunning there. and Wanted to settle into the character. Didn't get as much done as we uh, uh, as I was hoping to get with this first attempt with a new guy. But that was a lot. L listen, throwing the realm into debt for four years to get a one-of-a-kind elven bloodline, I think was absolutely the right play, even if it did slow us down to a crawl there for a little bit. We'll get enough raiders to be able to actually go raiding tomorrow, and then we'll really get the ball going very, very fast. We'll get the ball rolling. Money will be no object. Don't have to fabricate hooks for simple cash, but we can get it for defensively and political plays and that type of thing. So tomorrow things will really pick up. But I think it was still worth it. Don't get me wrong. Thank you to Cow Aladdin, Daggett, Moira Valkyrie, Nexus, Scotty, Peter Sarossi, Weir Baby, Crackadacker, Blue Cerberus 88, Wen Gun, Swole Crackers, Malarkey, Dutch Word for Lobster. Hoaxor, Sam, Carly's Rainbows, Nephine, Fishbowl, Mega Oscar Pone, Cole Bacon, Dr. Annie, Goosen, Deathcore Hippie, Q, Spongy1312, and O Trash Panda for their support at the Executive Producer Tears over on Patreon. Thank you for supporting my beautiful Alvin Dynasty. Much obliged. Thank you as well to Jahihi, Ursus Arctus, Pair of Pants, Lunamaya, David Van Diepen, Sobolo, Baconomics, Bjornolf, Z Audio 951, Buckyo, Nylanthria, Dorathus, Green King, and Max Soplo as well. See you all tomorrow.